Hello students, welcome to another tutorial on vectors. In this tutorial, we're going to look at a question I left you guys with in the previous video. Hope you had time to go through it. Let's quickly jump into it and see what we have to do. So in this case, the saying we have, the saying, the resultant of, uh, of two force vectors A and B has a magnitude 150 newtons along the y-axis. If the resultant, if the force vector B makes an angle of 60 degrees with the positive x-axis, Find the magnitude of B in the direction of A, given that the X component of A is equal to negative 60 newtons. So what you see in this case is they're giving us the resultant and they're giving us bits and bits of the two vectors which make that resultant. Now, how do we approach this question to get the answer? Well, like always, the table is going to be very helpful in this case. So we have to make that table. So Quickly go through this. I hope you guys have had time to see the other videos so that you understand exactly what we're doing when we're resolving these vectors. Okay, so in this case, we see that we have two vectors, A and B, which are giving us that resultant. So we quickly list those two vectors here. Now, for each vector, we want to get the X component. Apart from the X component, we also want to get the Y component. Then lastly, down here, we have the resultant of the two vectors that is going to be labeled R. Now, what are they saying? Well, the saying is, the resultant of two force vectors A and B has magnitude of 150 newtons along the y-axis. So this 150 newtons that they're giving us, this is the resultant, this is the magnitude of the resultant, not of B. So, I'm just going to put Newton up here to show that all these components are going to be in Newton. So that's the unit there. So that I don't have to write Newton every time I'm writing a value. Okay. So the resultant has magnitude 150 Newtons and they're saying in what direction? Along the Y axis. So the fact that they say it is along the Y axis, it means that the whole lot, that 150 Newtons is along the positive Y axis meaning the resultant has zero displacement in the, has, yeah, it has zero magnitude or zero in the x-axis. So in the x-axis, the resultant has nothing, but in the y-axis, the whole lot, because they say it is 150 newtons along the y-axis. Okay, what else are they saying? Well, the next sentence they're saying, if the force vector B makes an angle of 60 degrees with the positive x-axis, so what, what does that mean? Well, to know how we handle that, let's quickly see where this vector is. What they're saying is that this vector makes an angle of 60 degrees. So let's say this is the vector. It makes an angle of 60 degrees with the positive x. So this is 60 degrees. First, that is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. So it makes an angle of 60 degrees with the positive x-axis. So what you see here is that its x component will be here, its y component will be there. So if we try to get the x component of this vector, we don't know what this vector is. So let's just call it vector B. So all we know is the x component of B is, let's label it Bx, it is adjacent to the angle. So we're going to use cos. So it is the vector itself, cos, 60 degrees. The y component of B, let's say B in Y, is opposite to the vector, to, to the angle. So we're going to use sine. So it is the vector itself, B, sine the angle 60 degrees. And you see the x component is to the right, positive. The y component is vertical going up, positive as well. So they haven't told us what the vector is. So that's why I'm just using B to represent the vector itself. So I can fill that information here. The X component, B cos 60. The Y component, B sine 60. Okay, what else are they saying? Well, if we go back up, the same. Find the magnitude of B in the direction of A, given that the X component of A is equal to negative 60 Newtons. So for the x component of A, they are telling us to say that this is actually 
negatives in case the neutrons. So here they, they're not giving us the vector, they're actually giving us a component of the vector A, and this component is actually negative sequistic um, neutrons. So we put negative sequistic. They haven't said anything about the Y component of the vector A. So I'm just going to say this is A Y, the Y component of vector A. Now from here, we can quickly work out uh, a few things. So what we know is the relationship between the components and the resultant. So here, you should see that if you add the vector A, the X component of vector A plus the X component of vector B, they should give us the X component of the resultant, which is zero. In other words, if we added that negative sequistic uh, neutrons plus the X component of B, which is B cos sequistic, yeah, that's B cos sequistic. What we get when we add this is supposed to be the Y component, the X component of the result. From here, we see that B cos sequistic is equal to positive sequistic. When the sequistic crosses, it becomes positive. Here then, we're saying B is equal to sequistic over cos sequistic. Cos sequistic is half, meaning that this comes to give us 120 newtons as the magnitude of B. So here we have obtained the magnitude of B. The only thing that is remaining is for us to get the direction of A. Because the question is saying the magnitude of B in the direction of A. Now, how do we get the direction of A? Well, if you now go back to the diagram here, there are a number of ways you can get the direction of A, but we're going to use this column for the Y components. All we know is if you add A in Y plus B in Y plus, when you add A in Y plus B in Y, we get 150. So using that, let's try to see what A in Y is. Okay, so that will give us what A in Y is. So if we add A in Y plus B in Y, B in Y is B sine sequistic. What I'm supposed to get here is positive 150. But we already know what B in Y is. We know what, what not B in Y, what the, the, the magnitude of B is. B is 120. So this is now 120 sine sequistic is equal to 150. So let's find what AY is. This is going to be 150 minus 120 sine sequistic. When we simplify this, we see that A in Y comes out to give us 46.08 newtons. So this becomes the X component of of A. Now, what we have? Well, we now know what A in X is. This was given to us, negative sequistic. Now we have just found what AY is, and this is 46.08. Now, the question is asking us to find the direction of A. To get the direction, notice that this is where we use the angle. So the angle here comes, we get it by get using tan inverse. So tan inverse the y component divided by the x component. So this is tan inverse, the y component 46.08, the x component minus CKST. So from here, if we evaluate this, we see that the angle comes out to be negative 37.52 degrees. Okay, now, if you saw the previous video, you have to understand that the fact that one of the components is negative means that we have to take another step to get this particular, to get the, uh, the direction correctly. Now, the easiest way of actually knowing what, what you have to do is to sketch this, this vector A. So if you try to sketch the vector A, this is the Y, this is the X, you see that the X component is negative sequistic. So the X component is coming this side, negative sequistic. The Y component, on the other hand, if we look at it, the Y component is positive, positive 46.08. So the Y component is positive. 
So the resultant vector A or the vector A itself is actually this vector here. So the angle we have found is this one here. This is the 37.52. So it is negative because it was measured clockwise. That's why it was negative. Now to state it as an answer, we have to measure it anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis. So we have to measure it from here up to this part. So let me label this as phi. So from here, this angle we're looking for plus the 37.52. This is supposed to add up to 180, angle of a straight line. So from here, we see that our angle is equal to 180 minus 37.52. Because these are angles, they're in degrees. So from here, when we make the subtraction here, we see that our final answer comes out to be 142.48 degrees. Okay. All right. Hope you were able to follow through this. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the in the comment section below. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in the next tutorial. This was your tutor.